we have very high expectation on the Korean market. You know, with the joining of the Korean investors and opening up the door and helping us to come into the market, we hope to we can support the Korean developers. Korea is probably the only country in the world where 20 years old all the way to 60 years old, they all like the blockchain concept. Right. It's so passionate about, you know, there. And, and I, think, I think that's important because what we're trying to do with blockchain is trying to make this the next internet. It's not just the young generation. Yes. We cannot wait 60 years for everyone to use it. You know, tomorrow everyone has to use it. We are, our mission is to do that, is to enable the next billion users onto blockchain. It is to become the next internet and they all want to contribute. And we allow them to contribute because we are permissionless, because we are seamless, because we are type one, because we are the only 100% open source project. We, we want to always reward you know, share our success with everyone that participated in the network, one way or the other. This is this is a secret, but secret. then but today it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> we are definitely planning to mainnet launch in Q2. You already mentioned about the belief yes. from the community and developers yeah. several times. Mm -hmm. What what the beliefs goes forward? Where where to go? Well, I think you know um, if we think about how internet changed our life, mm -hmm. you know, in the last cycle, you know, I think you know the same thing is actually happening to to the blockchain, right? Um, since the beginning of blockchain, it has been about. 10, 15 years. Yes, yeah, right. Uh, the, but the first 10 years of internet, also nothing happens. Mm. Only a small group of people, early adopters, start to use it. You know, uh, what we believe and what our community and developer believe is in the next cycle, actually, you know, a, a billion users will come on board. When we scale the Ethereum network enough, yeah. when we make it efficient enough, when we make the user experience just like, you know, internet, mm. you know, when anyone you know can don't need to learn you know and can immediately know how to use just it just like internet just like internet yeah. then then you know it will happen mm. right so i think a lot of the our developers and proposers provers and users they all wants to they believe that we are our mission is to do that is to enable the next billion user onto a blockchain it is to become the next internet and they all want to contribute and we allow them to contribute because we are permissionless, because we are seamless, because we are type one, because we are the only 100% open source project, you know, in the space. So they can all come in, they can all help, and they can all be part of the motion. And they can all feel proud that they actually help participate in the journey. That's why, you know, any, any one time, there are 50, 60, 70,000 people you know, talking about how they can contribute, mm. what they can do to make it happen faster. You know, I don't think, you know, yes, we are a very efficient team of 38 people. We have only done two years and we already like, have a, the largest community. But actually, it's more of the developer, the proposers, the provers, the miners, the users. They all help us, you know, and, and that, that's why we are able to be so fast. I don't think we can build a, a, a big enough team to have done what we have done in two years if we're trying to do it all by ourselves. If we adopt a closed system, if we say, you know, we are the one who's going to build everything, you know, you guys just wait and then use it when we are ready. I don't think we will have done what we have done in these two years. And therefore, the community and the developers are being satisfied with what they're doing right now? I think, I think they have very <laughs> high expectation. They are all <laughs> waiting for us to go Not mainnet. Yet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, you know, they, they, they all contributed a lot. They are expecting that, you know, they can all, you know, use and benefit from the ecosystem. And I think in, is this in our mission to make sure that happens. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's get into the other question about the mainnet. Sure. Is there yeah. any plan for the launching mainnet yes. in the near future? So, um, this is this is a secret, but secret. then but today it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> um, Thank you. <laughs> yes, we are definitely planning to mainnet launch in Q two. To Q two. Q two this year. 
So we don't know the exact date yet, yeah. but it will be pretty early Q2. And the reason being that, you know, um, um, we are just running the last cycle of security audit and stress test of our system. And, and you know, all, all our testnet has been heavily participated. Millions of what users has come in, you know, they have tens of millions of transactions has already gone through and Ethereum network has just done an upgrade, you know, and then, you know, and uh, we will, will main that on the newly upgraded Ethereum network. Mm -hmm. So we're doing the last cycle of stress test. And once we are satisfied, you know, with the result, you know, it's proven, everything's stable, then we'll go main that. So we know that for sure that this will happen in Q2. Uh, and on which exact day of Q2, we don't know yet because it depends on the result of all the tests and stress tests and audit, you know, but otherwise we are ready, yes. Every crypto player uh, knows the testnet from the Taiko was very successful actually. Yes. How was it? Uh, it, is, it, is, it is better than we could have expected or wanted from it. Um, um, they in we have six test nets so far. Yeah, you know every test net we is meant to test different aspect of our design. Oh. The first test net is about type one. Is the developer experience really copy and paste? Mm -hmm. The second test net is about decentralized proposing. The third test net is about the the, the decentralized proposing and proving. The fourth test net is to test the tokenomics. The fifth test net is to test the contestable rollout. You know, so every test net we're testing different aspects. Mm -hmm. And every time there is very, very, very big participation. And because of the passionate, excited participation, it allows us to stress test every version, identify all the areas that we need to improve. And so that's why we are so close to being able to mainnet now, mm -hmm. is because the result of the test net is very, very encouraging. The sixth uh, test net was the last one before it get launched. Uh, we will do one small upgrade, actually. Small upgrade. Oh, actually, this week. You know, oh. it's, be it's it's because of the Ethereum upgrade, which is you know they they call it you know uh, Duncan proto Duncan yeah. sharding, yeah. Um, so we will we will we will enable Duncan you know, down sharding, uh, Duncan upgrade on our test net and do the the last round of stress test. Uh, if everyone everything works as planned, it, then oh, we'll be right. ready. Yeah, that's the last minor upgrade that will it will happen actually this week. Upgrading yeah. of the application of Duncan upgrade from it, Ethereum, right? It actually doesn't affect the developer yeah, at yeah. all. You know, it's just our chain turn it on, and then also to the users. It doesn't affect the user yeah. either. They just but then what they will see uh -huh. the only way the developer and the user will see the difference when we turn on the the Duncan upgrade is. Is they it's will, done. <laughs> it's, it's done. Yeah. It's much faster. Yeah. It's much easier. Gas fee go down by a lot. You know, so it's much cheaper to use. Mm -hmm. That's all they are going to feel. They won't feel any other things. In a good way, right? Yeah. Okay. And it should be the next question just because I just asked you about the mainnet. Yes. Also about the token. Token. Any okay. plan for the issuance of token? Okay. So. Yeah. So one of the element of our design, being a fully decentralized, permissionless proposing and proofing network, means that the proposers and proofers need to use our token mm. in order to generate proof for the blocks. What it means is when we may not launch, we have to launch the token. You know, unlike other layer twos, because they have a centralized proofing, they don't. The token is pure governance token. Yeah. It's not needed for the network to operate. In our case, our token is an absolute must have in order for the provers to be able to prove our block. So they need to use it as a utility token as well as a governance token. So what it means is any day that we may not launch, the token will be launched on the same day or maybe just a day or two days different. So token launch plan is together with mainnet. Yes. Right now, I, I, I was just a little bit of understanding of the Taiko, what they're doing, because I thought it was like very uh, deeply linked to the Ethereum, actually, it is. originally, but yes. uh, it's quite independent, actually. We are actually to... very closely linked because we are base row up, we are, we are because layer one validator, but, you know, sequence our blocks. But at the same time, in order to do the roll up and in order for, you know, 
tens of thousands of proposers and provers helping us to build the blocks and proving the block. They need to use our token. So that's the value of our token, we call it a gas token. You know? so, so TKO is our own token to enable that network. So, so we, will, we, will, we will launch the token together with Mainnet, yes. Okay, looking forward to it. Yes. Q2. Q2, yes, Q2. <laughs> okay, let's talk about very successful uh, investment from the others. Yes. Like recently, Taiko have raised mm. uh, investment from a Korean domestic company, mm. just like Hashit. Mm. Mm. Oh, so as well as a global investors like the Faction Generative mm. Ventures, Wintermute mm. also, and yeah. so on. How big money was it? Um, any significant yes. uh, investment? Can we see how value it was? Yes. So, so we are, we are very happy yeah. that um, our investor, we have raised three rounds of funds, fundraising, and then our investor profile actually now covers all four continents yeah. around the world. You know, we have the, the most balanced and global coverage representation of the tier one investors like Sequoia, like, you know, uh, Faction Lightspeed you mentioned, Hashed, yeah. you know, Career, and then, you know, uh, our Generative Venture from Europe, etc. cetera. So, um, so first of all, I, uh, I think, you know, they, I'm, we are very pleased and glad that they believe in what we are building. Mm. And as much as they believe that investment will have a very good return uh, when we may not launch and token launch, I think they, the, these, the VCs also believe in what we are trying to achieve. Mm. And they also want to contribute in a way that they can, whether it's in their region or whether, for example, Wintermill, Presto, GSRs, you know, they can help to make sure the, net, the, the, the market has a lot of liquidity. You know, uh, uh, each of our investors have a, a lot of portfolio company, like a hundred portfolio company. They have, you know, ever since they have invested, they have been helping to facilitate yeah. all the portfolio company to work with us, you know, to deploy on us, to provide infrastructure tools for us. So, so I think, you know, the, the way that we see investors is not just for the money that they put in. Of course, they trust us with their money and we, you spend it very carefully uh, because of the trust. But more importantly is the, is the influence, market influence, the rich, you know, the, the portfolio that they have, the, you know, those are more valuable to us for our success. So, so I think, you know, having, having including more career in investors, you know, coming in to support us and believe in what we're doing. Um, we, we are very, we are very happy that we have that coverage because there's no way we can enter a market without local yeah. help. So I think that that gives us more lean, lean entry leeway into every single market. Yeah. I hope you're doing well yes. in, in the global market. Okay. Let's talk about the career market. Yes. The career market is one of the greatest market in the global crypto yes. industry, maybe number two, maybe number three, mm -hmm. uh, except China. <laughs> and what are you thought about the Korean market? What are yes. you? Uh, what What is your expectation for yes. the Korean market? So, so when when we start to learn about Korean market, we find Korean market very interesting. Yeah, very and interesting. Right? Very interesting and very. That the reason why Korean market is so important for us is because Korea is probably the only country in the world where 20 years old all the way to 60 years old, they all like the blockchain concept. Right. You know, they all embrace it. In many other, other countries, you know, only the young people, they, they accept, you know, the, the, the idea of young crypto, generation. Young right. generation. But in Korea, it's everyone. The demographic is universal. It's so passionate about you know there and, and i think i think that's important because what we're trying to do with blockchain is trying to make this the next internet the the, the requirement for it is everyone has to use it it's not just the young generation yes. we cannot wait 60 years for everyone to use it you know tomorrow everyone has to use it so i think in korean market we realize that this is probably the most universally well accepted across all generations of people, you know, uh, and, and this, is, this is very encouraging. So we would, we would love to, you know, be one of 
the infrastructure or the network that's known by Korean market, by Korean users, and trusted by the Korean, you know, community, and 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 the community, the the Korea developer. Yeah. So we have very high expectation on Korean market. You know, with the joining of the Korean investors and opening up the door and helping us to come into the market, we hope to we can support the Korean developers. The, there's a lot of exciting the apps, NFTs, games, you know, uh, social file apps that's being built here, you know, uh, social media apps are very popular here. So we hope that, you know, we can be the chain for a lot of Korean developers to deploy on. And we hope that, you know, everyone will know what Taiko is about and the, the user will know us and use us. And that's, that's our expectation of Korea. And we believe Korea is going to drive the adoption of blockchain, you know, around the world, because you know, because of what I just said. Uh, maybe the viewers, our the mm -hmm. block media's viewers, want to know how to uh, can I be engaged in, mm. in the Tycho's yes. the roadmap in the future yeah. with the mainnet launching and talking issue ones. Yes. Also, the developers in Korea also yeah. want to engage in. Yes. How, how come they get be? Oh well, we are learning how what's the best way. To, to engage the local community yeah. and the local developer. So that's why we are here. Yesterday, we have the first official Taiko event in Korea, and we met with hundreds of developers, you know, node runners and, you know, potential users, and, and, and that's our first attempt. Yeah. Um, but then we also understand that, you know, for example, like we, we absolutely need to have new ways uh, of engaging, for example, the language, you know, the, the, the habit and, you know, so, so first of all, we will, Taiko will be in Korea market a lot more frequently now, you know, we will always come back, we'll build up our local team, we'll start to engage with as much developer and community as we can, you know, from down. Um, we, as I, as I mentioned, you know, it, our main launch is in Q2, you know, uh, uh, we, we're still running the test net. You know, so any developer and user, you know, they're, they're, we, would, we would love them to start to try because it's a copy and paste. Yeah. So they can, any developer, we're hoping that we engage a lot of local developers, you know, uh, to, to try to copy and paste and deploy on us and engage with our community and the local community to also join in the test net. Um, um, we will also have a lot of things that will come up recently and announce it later. You know, as soon as it's confirmed, we'll announce it later. So to allow more local users and, you know, uh, to, to engage into everything. Yeah, including tokens and everything. Yes, we're working on those. Yes. Thank you. I hope you show what you got through yes. Blog Media in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I will always come here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Taiko, because we believe like we're building with the community for the community. Um, so, and a lot of users, developers, node runners have helped us in the past two years. You know, they have put in the effort, spent the energy, you know, spent the time and participated. Without them, there's no way we could have done what we have done today so fast. Grow, fast growth, verify our technology. So when we made that launch, um, I can almost guarantee you that we will look at everyone who have helped us to test the network, to build on our network, to, to, to do our network. We will always, we will definitely, you know, make sure that, you know, their effort has not been wasted. You know, they don't feel like they've wasted their energy. You know, that, that's our belief, right? Because if we are building it just for a small group of people's benefit, that's not what we're trying to do. You know, we want to, we will have DAO governance, you know, we will, we will let the community decide what our next step is. So in the process, I think we will definitely want to give back to the community who actually help us, you know, along the way, yeah. you know. And, and we have actually recently pledged 1% of our total supply to yeah. Protocol Guild officially. We have also donate to the EF Foundation for ZK Research. And, and the, the same F ethos will, you will see it in Taiko is we, we want to always reward, you know, share our success with everyone that participated in the network one way or the other. So 
Um, so yes, so hopefully, you know, the Korean community developers, they can all come and support us. You know, we'll find ways to, to give back to them. And, and, and Edgejob is one of the ways mm -hmm. that we could do. But I also don't want people to think that, you know, once you make that, the first Edgejob go out, then it's done, right? Uh, because I think we want to continue to engage the developer, the node runners and the user community. So announcement, more announcement might come um, as, as we come closer to mainnet. You know, it's not about just about the mainnet yeah. airdrop, it's about how we continue to engage the community after mainnet. And those will all be, hopefully you will give me the chance to come here and share those sure. news with Why the readers too, yes. 자, 지금까지 미래의 돈을 만나보는 퓨처머니 타이코 랩스의 CEO이신 터렌스 램 님과 함께 했습니다. 고맙습니다. Thank you. Thank you.